So a question many growers are asking, how can I prevent hoplite and viroid from spreading? In this Debaku University video, we'll go through on how to answer this question. Okay, so if you're wondering how you can prevent hoplite and viroid from spreading, this is the video for you. So uh, it's just some additional resources you might want to consider in addition to this one. Uh, there's one a presentation provided here as well as a little bit of a, like a podcast interview style, um, additional resources. Again, these links can be found in the description of this video under the references and works cited portion. So how do you prevent it from spreading? Well, it all starts with knowing what you have and having a good testing and screening protocol. This doesn't mean just testing a couple plants in your entire operation, it means testing all of your plants. A lot of grower-friendly kits are available, but this we rely on you to be very organized, uh, be very good with your labeling, and essentially establishing or knowing what you have is the good start to any um, process to prevent uh, something from spreading. Now, if you're sending samples off to get tested, what should you be doing uh, while you're waiting for those results to come back? And this is just good growing practices in general. So adhering to strict and consistent tool steri sterilization processes is very important. PPE for workers, you know, having, you know, masks and, ho and hoodies and gloves and booties for the shoes, all good things you should be implementing in your indoor grow operation. Rigorous testing protocols, uh, repeat testing, particularly of the mother room, if not your other um, rooms as well. But definitely, if you're going to pare down to one area, focus definitely on the mother room, especially if you're taking clones from those, you want to ensure those clones are going to be viroid free. Now, initially, you might want to take more plants in the veg room as well, uh, because if one is infected, it can easily infect others. Now, the obvious is plant eradication. You know, how can we go about eliminating this? Well, if you eliminate the host, you essentially eliminate the viroid. Removing plants that test positive, removing them and followed by a continual testing can reduce the presence of hoplite and viroid in a growing operation. So here's just an example here. We're starting with, you know, a lot of plants and slowly over time that trend is going down. Removing those infected plants is really key and important. There may be higher numbers to start with, but in the long run, it will save you a lot of frustration and kind of stop this hopefully from fighting it on a continual basis. Identify those few plants, get rid of those, um, ensure others are also testing clean. Repeat testing is also important to help keep ensuring you're reducing those numbers. Now, cleaning tools and surfaces. Sounds great to any good sanitation protocol. It should be done on a regular basis. However, the product you select as your cleaner may uh, make the area look clean, but may not have an impact on hoplite and viroid. This is something very interesting. A lot of growers don't know this. So here are some methods that are great looking in area clean or sterilization that really are not effective. These do not work on hoplite and uh, viroid. Might work for other things such as bacteria or more living things, but not the viroid. If you use alcohol, even 99% isopropyl, that's not going to work. Alcohol and then flame, that's not going to work. And just flaming tools with high heat. Um, hydrogen uh, peroxide, acetic acid, or you know, uh, the, that's the acid in vinegar. Ammonium cleaner, such as Lysol. UV light, um, UVC exposure on the leaves and roots for five minutes. The virus is still present. All of these are ineffective methods if you're looking at targeting a viroid. So this leads to the question, well, what would be viable? Uh, so what does work, uh, at least on tools and surfaces? We're not cleaning plant material, that's even more difficult. Um, uh, Vircon S2%. Household bleach in the 10 to 20% range for 30 to 60 seconds uh, is also effective. Uh, common lab saying that was in a lab and working, it was 10% bleach for 10 minutes. Um, that's something I would recommend. Though if you are using uh, bleach or really any of these, you want to mix and use them the same day. You don't want to let them sit for a long portion, a long duration of time. Their effectiveness does wane or does get reduced over time. So household bleach and this for kind of S, two ones uh, that are effective compared to all the lists, while the other ones that many people think are effective, but not for a viroid. So the same cannot be applied to the root or actually plant tissue itself. The previous products or recommendations are for tools and surfaces, and those effective in those those are effective in those situations are not effective at cleaning actual plant material. So you think you're gonna like, oh, I've got some infected roots, let me dip them in bleach or do this. Um, it's not really gonna clean the plant material. It's only gonna affect the sap that's kind of on the bench, on the tools, on the working surface there. You're not gonna clean a plant uh, with these methods. 
UVC radiation, this is effective UVC radiation on the hot plate and viroid, stability in roots and leaves. Virus is very stable in plant uh, tissue. This makes it very hard to clean the plant material or rid the area of that uh, viroid, which is why it should be bagged and physically removed from the location. You're not going to, oh, here's an infected plant, let me hit it with a lot of UV light and then remove it. Now you want to kind of put a bag carefully over it and you want to seal it up, minimizing your contact with that plant, keeping it in the bag, sealing the bag up, and then physically removing it the shortest route possible to the furthest dumpster possible to get it out of the growing area. Uh, SAP, again, is much more difficult. The best method for SAP containing virus may be nucleases. So this is something used in a lab to basically disrupt uh, DNA or RNA. Um, so this, this viroid is RNA-based. So this might be one way to kind of use this to go through and clean the plant. Uh, but keep in mind, these can be uh, uh, much of a concern because particularly ones that alter uh, DNA, you have DNA in your hands, so you want to be mindful of that. Um, so this is a laboratory approach that is showing some early indications of potential effectiveness. However, its application to actual plants, um, actively growing plants in a growing operation, still yet to be well established or understood. Um, so while it may work in a lab setting, this might work for a potential uh, tissue culture operation, but not really for an established plant. That careful uh, identify, uh, bag, tag, and remove would be what I would recommend. Uh, and that continual screening is the core of any, gr any good protocol to reduce the spread of hoplite and viroid.